Well, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce uh, Congressman Foster. Well, um, well, thanks you so much, Pierre and, and Mark, for the introduction. And I just see so many old friends here, it just, I can't stop smiling. I, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm ID card 6562. That's my ID number. I bet there are people well above 10,000 here. Um, and I think, uh, Ryuji, you probably have the lowest. What's your ID no number? 114. Yep, so the Ryuji, I think he's, he's the, is there is anyone that can outbid um, ID number 114? Um, <laughs> I think Ryuji wins. And um, when and so I was thinking, um, what could I do that would really, I, you know, I'd like to put an interesting twist in my talk. So I think the thing that I could do that would surprise you more than anything else that I could do at this point is to stick to my prepared remarks. So maybe I'll give that a shot and see how it turns out. <laughs> um, and I have one serious duty here. However, Senator Durbin could not be here today, and he is a great friend of Fermilab, and all of you should know it. Um, I, you know, I'd like to thank him for his support and leadership and advocacy of Fermilab. Um, he understands it's an important economic and technological anchor for the 14th District in all of Illinois. And he is, he is your friend, and don't you forget it. Um, and last summer I had the honor of working with Senator Durbin to save 200 jobs here when we successfully were able to insert a vital funding for Fermilab into the emergency supplemental appropriations bill for the Iraq war, which is a rather interesting way to fund science, but you, one of the things you learn in Washington is you, you do what you can do and you take what you can get. Um, so today we build on this success by announcing additional stimulus funds that will continue to support this world-class laboratory. In February, the President signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act into law. I supported the stimulus bill because it w was a combination of middle class tax cuts and targeted spendly, spending designed to put money in the pockets of consumers and to save and create jobs while also promoting long term economic stability and growth. Already, you can see money from the stimulus having a positive impact for the people of the 14th District. Across our area, I've seen firsthand the stimulus at work from one-time $250 payments for Social Security recipients to the more than $63 million in education funds to the more than $28.7 million in transportation improvements. And so when you see all of that road work going on with a little um, ARRA sign on it, you can blame me for the delay. Um, but we will find, we, will, we have been funding projects throughout the district and it's, it's made a huge impact. Um, and now I'd like to, um, add another item to that list of projects in the 14th District. Today I am pleased to announce that Fermilab will receive $60.2 million in funding from the Department of Energy as part of the stimulus package. This is in addition to the $34.9 million Fermilab received earlier this year, which brings Fermilab stimulus support that we've announced to date to more than $95 million, and we're going to be giving you an updated number that we expect to be slightly higher than that within the, the next few days. Um, as a result of these newly released funds, at least 125 jobs are estimated to have been created due to the construction, material, and equipment needs um, that this project requires. Of the 60.2 million, 52.7 million will go toward research for next generation particle accelerator technologies using superconducting, I hope I pronounced that right, radio frequency technology. <laughs> you see, it's, it's anyway. Um, <laughs> Wow, you know, it's amazing with, with a certain amount of practice, you know, things that pop into your head and you can bite them before they come out of your tongue. Um, you know, this, it's a <laughs> so this technology provides a highly efficient way to accelerate beams of particles and has potential applications in medicine, energy, industry, and material science. Um, seven and a half million, roughly, will be used for neutrino research at the intensity frontier in collaboration with Brookhaven National Laboratory. That's one of the great things that's going on now. We are seeing much better collaboration between the, the national laboratories. And, um, and so I think that's a, that's a crucial and it's a very important element um, in what we're doing and what we'll continue to do throughout the country. Fermilab expects to receive 45 million of the 60.2 million directly in about two weeks. From there, the lab will start the procurement process, which means the funds will begin to be put to use. Shortly after that, much of the 45 million will start to get in, out into our local economy, into businesses and employees' hands, generating the kind of economic activity we need to spur, spur our economy so that it can continue to recover. But perhaps most importantly, Arcadia will finally get a high-quality 2-Kelvin refrigerator out in New Muon Lab. 
the stimulus funding is a big victory for Fermilab, and it's an even bigger victory for the 14th District. I'm so pleased to see that the stimulus is continuing to work for us, investing in the kinds of projects that will benefit both our local economy and our nation's scientific achievement. In addition to keeping us beyond competitive as a world leader in high energy physics, the funding that we are celebrating today will continue to create jobs and help grow our economy, which is precisely the point of the stimulus. So Pierre, and to all my former colleagues assembled here today, congratulations, and I look forward to seeing the great progress that you will make with the help of the stimulus. I'm happy to open up for a few questions from reporters, and then for those brave reporters that want to have a quick walkthrough and to see the really neat stuff that happens over in the buildings to the side, we can spend a couple minutes doing that too. Um, so any questions here?